Hello and welcome. I'm Vanelli. Now, I have a very special guest here today. This, this person's been around for many years. You've seen his work every time you scroll through Facebook or through um, on the internet. You scroll through, you stop at one of his images, you know exactly who he is, you watch it, and you're in all this photography. But today, what he's going to do, he's going to talk about an upcoming class where he's going to share not just his photography tips, but also his business tips on how you, as a photographer, can make a living doing stuff that you love. And yes. The guest is none other than Joel Grimes. How you doing? Well, it, it, thank you. Uh, this is all good stuff. I, I, I appreciate you taking the time here. And, um, yeah, so, you know, um, I started out at 19 years old, um, and I, want, I had this dream of being a photographer. And my professors, uh, when I first started taking classes, they said, no one expect to make a living at this, right? So that's, <laughs> you're paying all this money for college, and then you're told, don't expect to make a living, right? Um, and and it, is, it is a tough thing to make a living as a I overcame it, and I have uh, all these tips of how I went from uh, really Tucson, Arizona, I started out at a junior college, finally got my degree at University of Arizona, but even that degree didn't prepare me for the real world. And then I was thrust in the marketplace, and boy, did I have to learn some things really quick. And I talk about um, overcoming your fear of rejection, because um, we're all human, right? And nobody likes to be told you suck. <laughs> well, and I was told <laughs> many times. Um, and then I learned what I call the power of eight, which is literally, I can, I can, uh, if I decide I want to get into anything, National Geographic as a, as you know, or whatever it is, a magazine or an ad agency or whatever, I have learned how to get in the door and get someone to hire me. And those, that skill set right there is probably worth more than my whole photography skill set. So um, I love to talk about this stuff. I love to get people to go beyond just snapping good pictures, um, but living their dream as a working photographer. Great. And that's what's going to happen. This coming up Saturday, or I'm sorry, Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. or a.m. Pacific Time, you're going to touch base in your master class, right? Yes. Yes. And I'll, I'll go through some of my uh, sort of my foundational uh, uh, tips and everything. And then at the end, we're going to, I'm going to present to, I, I spent a year putting together 40 hours of training and we've broken it down to from the, the you know, how to take a picture of the craft to the business side, the artist side, um, the retouch side, all these things that I've done. And so people come to me and they say, Joel, I love your technique on how you get your toning to your images. How do you do that? I go, well, I spent hours, you know, going through classes on showing people how to do that or the lighting. I love teaching people how to light and I'm dyslexic and I'm terrible at math. So I learned how to light without a flash meter and how to, without a calculator, right? Wow. Without learning ratios. So I teach all that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Now, one of the topics you're going to talk about, which I was really excited to see, was how to get the job. You know, because yeah. there are some people, and, and our good friend Mike Cabasey, we talk about this all the time. Some people can get the job, they just know how to do the job. And right. then there are other photographers who are phenomenal, they just can't get the job. So that's right. something you're going to talk about, right? Yes. Well, okay, so that, isn't that funny that we, well, sometimes we'll see a really good photographer and they can't pay their light bill. Exactly. They're starving. They never make enough money to, you know, to, and then you see someone that's not very good at photography and they're rocking it. They're like doing all these big shoots. So you go, well, wait a minute. So what I, um, I always had this little saying that, I wanted to learn how to take better pictures. And so every day I would get up and I'd say, what can I learn today? What can I bring someone in and do a test shoot or whatever? That was number one, shoot. And then the other thing I always did every day was market. Shoot, market, shoot, market, shoot, market. That was my motto. And I hated to market, hated it. But I learned how to make it fun. And once you learn how to make it fun, then you, you start uh, infiltrating the marketplace and next thing you know you start getting all these big jobs so um, I had to make it fun and, and I, I love to pass all that stuff on to other people because the world's so big that I used to have photographer friends of mine say <coughs> they say why are you giving all your marketing secrets away 
aren't you going to be like building or, you know, having people that are now going to be competing against you? And I go, no, because the world's too big. Oh, you know, I only need, I only need 10 clients. In fact, today, I think I would say I could probably get away with five clients. Wow. Five good clients can make, give me enough money every year to, to do everything I want. Oh, that's awesome. Now, so give me an example um, and what you're going to be teaching on how to find jobs. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I had to learn to overcome was how to make a cold call. Now, now if you, if you have never made a cold call, so you've avoided it your whole life, right? And, and probably you avoid it because it's painful. But if you, <laughs> but let's say you did, and you, at some point you had a job where you had to make cold calls, right? Torture. It's torture. So I had to learn how to make cold calls without being it making it torture. And so I go, I go through all these little techniques of how I do that. And one is, just to give a, a, a little sneak peek, is that you never make a cold call until you've sent that person a packet of something that represents what you do. And I had a lot of fun making really cool little promo pieces that I would send out, and then I would make the phone call and say, hey, Joel Grimes here. I just sent you a little packet. I hope you got it. And I'd love to come in and talk to you about your photography needs. And so um, once you send that packet, you kind of have that little bit more of an incentive to call because they now know what kind of, you know, what who you are. Yeah, plus your, your foot is in the door now and they feel yeah. like they know you. Yeah, and I always do it in, 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 a, in a sets of four. So I, I build four different sets of images before looking the same and I go out and I send it out make cold call send it out make cold call make, and and often I don't get them on the phone until maybe you know down the road a little bit but it's a lot of times it's just leaving a voice message gotcha. and then how are you doing the, the packets are you sending them out in the mail or over the internet no 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 all by mail yeah no 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 you want to you want to get a physical something physically in front of them and now you can do marketing through email and we have all this social media stuff yeah. now that's great. But really, I don't think there's still anything better than getting a delicate, beautiful, little hand something. It doesn't have to be very expensive, but something that they can hold and they can flip through it and say, oh, my gosh, look at this photographer. This photographer went out of their way to go and make this and give it to me. And that's that 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 already starts the ball, the ball rolling in terms of winning somebody over. Yeah, you're right. I mean, what's old is new again. Because I mean, that, that's how we did it in the past. Remember, we would send out little, like you just said, like little um, portfolios and stuff to other people. Yep. They got their hands on it. They touched it. They liked it. And then all of a sudden, the internet came along, and people thought, well, hey, we can send out emails. And everyone back then loved looking at emails. Now we all hate looking at our emails. So Exactly. <laughs> so what I, I always say that, you remember when the iPad came out, a lot of photographers, I did, you know, I jumped on the bandwagon and got an iPad, sent it out in a little case, beautiful case, and someone would pop it up and the portfolio was all set and they just hit go and they could look at my work on an iPad. That was really cool for the first like three to six months. Yep. Then everybody was doing it. And then it's like, okay, you go back to a printed portfolio. Because um, I think today a printed portfolio has more impact than a a monitor screen, though even though a monitor screen is beautiful, we look at all the colors and the tones, but there's something about a printed piece that makes it like it's, it kind of puts it in a, in a shrine, so to speak. It, it makes it feel like it's, it's, it's been, it's taken to that next level of been, being printed and then presented. And um, so I have a printed portfolio today, um, but for a while I'd used the iPad, you know? So I always say, what everyone's doing, usually you want to do the opposite. That makes sense. Makes sense. Now, what other topics are you going to be covering in your class? Well, so what I do is I frame frame up the uh, this concept that um, let's say you love photography, right? And you think, hmm, you know, I'm going to go to college. So you go get a degree. And you find out that only 10% of graduating photographers end up working in their field. So a 90% failure rate. Yeah. So then you go, wait, why is that? Are they not being taught the correct, you know, how to take a picture? Well, they are being taught how to take a picture. But what are they missing? So I go through this kind of a framework of saying, why is it that there's such a high failure rate in the in, in photographers that want to go and chase their dream? And so I, I present that case and I say, look, I have the secret. I have cracked the code. 
and I can help you. That's that's my whole thing. And so now we all know this. I have kids. I have four boys and I'm always giving them advice. Right. And do they always take my advice? <laughs> <laughs> no. So not everyone takes your advice. You give them the secret sauce and they go, whatever. But uh, for the most part, I, I think that um, people get it. When, when I when I teach lighting, um, and I'm going to talk about a couple images too on Monday. I'll, I'll take an image and kind of break it down a little bit. But when I talk about lighting, lighting is a kind of a mystery, you know, because you, you have all these modifiers, what kind of strobes, you know. Do you use an octabox, a, a, a rectangular box? Do you use a beauty dish? There's so many options your head spins, right? And what I like to do is I like to take all that confusion and then break it down, start over, and then build from there. And so I do that with the case of how to make a living in photography or um, how to live your dream. So if you want to work for National Geographic, I can tell you how to get there. Oh, that, that is awesome. And, and I look, you know, it's, it's funny you're saying how there's a 90%, it's not funny, but where you mentioned there's a 90% job failure rate, you know, from college, photographers yep. from college and going out. Well, doctors is a good example. I didn't realize chiropractors and doctors, they make them take business classes because they want them to learn that once they have their own practice, how to be right. successful. So, and I'm glad you're, you're filling in that missing gap for photographers that they need education on business. Well, okay, so let's just do this. Let's say at Photoshop World or some event I'm going to, right? And there's, let's say, 40 instructors. I think at Photoshop World, there might be as many as 50, but a lot of instructors, right? They all have their little thing. They all do their little thing, right? Now, if, if you got someone that comes into Photoshop World or somewhere and they go, I'm here to learn, and what do they think about how to learn to take a picture, right? Business is like off to the, you know, they're not really thinking about business. So whenever I have a lighting class, I pack it out. Whenever I have a business class, it's half empty. <laughs> well, okay. Now, there's, there's, actually, there's actually a benefit to that to the photographer that says, I want to learn how to learn the business side. Because half of their competitions already, they've already already overcome half their competition. Because most people don't see the value of a business, uh, you know, track or business interest. So I always say for the, for the half of the people that, that showed up, I say, you're already ahead of the game. Exactly. So you have to learn the business side. And I love teaching the photography side and the lighting side and how to take a picture. I do all crazy things with lighting, also with tilt shift lenses. And, you know, I do some fun stuff. But it's the business side that's going to make you, uh, you know, get your new, your new car, your, buy a house of your dream, go on vacations or whatever it is. It's that side that's going to build, build your dream um, and, and, and not have to go and, you know, borrow money from your parents or whatever it is to stay afloat. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, Joel, what I like about this is not everyone wants to open up their own business. Like, I took a cooking class once. I just wanted to learn how to cook better, not to open up my own restaurant. But right. what I like what you're talking about is the hobbyist or a person who loves photography and necessarily doesn't want to make a living at it, but with what you're going to teach them, they'll be able to afford their hobby. They'll be able to buy more gear. And, and, and what other sport can you do? What other hobby can you do that with? If you're a golfer, yeah. I mean, you but, have to be but, a phenomenal golfer to eat. But think about this. <laughs> think about this. Okay, so you're a hobbyist, right? And you, you've you got money. Maybe you, you invested in the, the stocks and you're now sitting fat and happy. But would you not like to maybe get into a gallery? Exactly. Oh, that's a great one. Good. And wouldn't you like to have the cover of, uh, you know, maybe like here in Arizona, we have Arizona Highways Magazine, right? That's a very prestigious magazine. Wouldn't you like to have the cover of that? Well, I've had the cover a couple of times. Well, how did I get that cover? Well, I know the secret of how to do it. Gotcha. And so, so even if I have all the money in the bank, I still love the recognition of having the cover of Arizona Highways Magazine. Guess what? Um, I get senators calling me up that say, can we have your prints hanging in our office in Washington, D.C.? You know, I get, I get people that call me up and say, like, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, corporate offices that love the Arizona cactus landscapes, whatever. And I did a whole series on that at one point and they're hanging all over Phoenix. Oh, that's great. So that's a great, uh, like say, I guess, badge of honor to be able to have all these things. I've had a, a show in the Smithsonian American History Museum, you know, 60 prints for 18 months. That's a great badge of honor to have those kind of things. 
So, so like I said, it's not just – it's learning how to infiltrate the marketplace to fulfill your dream. I guess that's the most important thing. Oh, God. Hey, Joel, this is great. And again, it's going to be this Monday, which is um, – what is what is the date of Monday? I think it will be the 24th. Yep, yep, you're right. The 24th. Uh, the 24th, this Monday, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time. And you're yes. going to go through your master class. Yeah, and you can sign up by going to – joelgrimes.com or if you have an, a link to that they can get to uh, that might be the way to go through yep yep i have i have a link that will be perfect to this video but hey joel thank you so much for taking the time out on the saturday to talk yeah. to the users about this well you said you stay up late are you just yeah. uh, is that doing photoshop and yeah then? i just um <laughs> for, the, for those I, who know me well I, 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 I get about four hours of sleep that's my, my whole life um I'm, really yeah when i competed on the karate circuit to you name it, we just four to six hours of sleep. Not to mention the fact Cabasi's on your time, so him and I stay up right. late. You know, so I get yeah. late with. Well, her. see, I need all the beauty sleep I can get. <laughs> You're too. So I get ten hours. I get ten hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too funny. All right, my man. Well, hey, thank you so much, and we'll talk real soon. Excellent. Thank you.